I can't get enough of you. Subscribe, like, and share. What did the director say? Asked Park Bob, the colleague sitting next to her. Well, from Monday. But there was no time to explain. As soon as Soon returned to her seat, work started pouring in. The woman who had come with the 10-year-old phone the previous day came back to pick up her repaired phone. Soon handed the woman her perfectly repaired phone. Because it's an old model, it took a while to find the parts. During the repair, the battery failed, so I replaced it with a new one. The battery replacement was free of charge. Oh my, thank you so much. The woman treated the phone as if it were a precious pet, caressing it gently. Soon gave her a warning. But if it breaks again, it might be hard to fix. You might lose all your stored data. Please back up your data regularly, and I recommend switching to a new phone if possible. How could I replace this? You worked so hard to fix it. You'll have to eventually. Many apps no longer support old versions. Thank you so much. I'll take good care of it. And here. Nodding at Soane's advice, the woman rummaged through her bag and pulled out a drink. Soane waved her hands. No, it's okay. I'm giving this because I'm really grateful. Think of it as a token of my appreciation. Occasionally, customers would offer unexpected gifts like this. While company policy stated they shouldn't accept anything, minor gifts like this were tacitly accepted. Soon had no choice but to accept the drink and bowed her head. She appreciated the customer's kind gesture more than the drink itself. She felt proud, thinking she had not only fixed a device but also healed the customer's heart. Receiving encouragement from a customer made her rethink her upcoming new position. Maybe this doesn't mean they want me to quit. If I prove my diligence, I might get my old position back. Wherever she went, she decided to work hard. They couldn't fire someone who worked diligently. Soon resolved to accept her fate. She decided not to be too afraid. Han Soon, you've overcome much scarier things before. Early afternoon, Yeolgia Law Firm. With a pounding heart, Hewook walked down the hallway, checking his reflection in the glass wall. Was his outfit all right? Did he look smart enough? As he adjusted his hair and practiced various expressions, Hyunji approached him. Are you heading to conference room at two, Attorney Yong? Are you too, Attorney Choi? Yes. What could this be about? Hyunji's cheerful voice inquired. It seemed that Attorney Lee Chanayel hadn't given Hyunji any details. It meant that Hiwook was the main, and Hyunji was the support. Hiwook smiled without answering. Attorney Lee Chanayel had mentioned introducing an important client. Chanayel was the attorney who received the most premium clients in the firm. He wouldn't make such a claim lightly. It must be someone significant in politics or business. He needed to make a good impression, appear smart and capable. As he steeled himself, the door opened. Hyunji entered the conference room first. Inside, next to attorney Lee Chanayel, sat a man who looked like a celebrity. His sharp nose, clear eyes, and chiseled jawline made him strikingly handsome. However, his relaxed posture and confident smile gave off an air of arrogance. Ah, uh, you're here, Chanael said, smiling as he looked toward they. The man stood up, filling the spacious conference room with his presence. He was at least half a head taller than Hewok. Although he was a guest, he exuded an aura of authority that felt somewhat intimidating. This is Attorney Yong Hiwook. And this is Attorney Choi Hyunji. Chanael introduced the two attorneys to the man. Hello, I'm Kim Taejun. The man greeted them with a relaxed smile and handed over his business card. Hiwook took the card, thinking the name sounded familiar. It read, Kim Taejun, Director of Central Headquarters, K Electronic Services. Upon seeing the name and title, Hiwook realized who he was. A while back, he had read news about the return of Kim Jae-pil, the chairman of K-Group's only grandson. 
There hadn't been any pictures in the articles, so Hiwook had been curious. Now he was seeing the man in person. This man had joined K Electronic Services. That was the same company where his girlfriend so -un worked. Hyunji, who had also received Taejun's card, seemed to recognize the name as well. She stifled a chuckle. Taejun asked Hyunji, Is there a problem? No, nothing at all. Attorney Lee Chanael recommended you too. He spoke highly of your abilities. It's thanks to his kind words, Hiwook responded with a modest smile and a slight bow. Taejun got straight to the point. As you may know, I am the K-Group Chairman Kim J-Pil only grandson of. I'm also the second in line to inherit his position. The only grandson. The second in line to the throne. Hiwook's heart swelled. He felt more excitement than when his girlfriend had offered to donate her liver to his mother. If he could build a relationship with this Chabel family member, or even become his personal attorney. The thought alone was exhilarating. Hiwook resolved to give Taejun's case his utmost effort. What I need from you two is. As Taejun paused, Hiwook swallowed his saliva nervously. Currently, I'm at K Electronics Service, but I'm scheduled to transfer to K Electronics Headquarters early next year. I'm preparing a plan for that transition. At that time, I intend to recruit top talents from around the world to form a dream team. Global headhunting carries the risk of legal disputes due to patent issues or non-compete agreements with their previous employers. I'd like you to mediate these issues by meeting these international talents in person. Therefore, I may need to request overseas business trips from time to time. Global headhunting. Dream team. Overseas business trips. Hiwook wrote down the key points in his notebook and circled them several times. The circles in his notebook grew larger, as did Hiwook's smile. I understand everything you've mentioned, director. Send me the relevant materials and schedule, and I'll start working on it right away. Yes, and you'll receive a non-disclosure agreement before starting. Don't worry about security. Hiwook replied confidently. After finishing the meeting, Taejun bid farewell to Hiwook and Hyunji and left the law firm. However, he soon returned, having deliberately left behind the business cards Hiwook and Hyunji had given him. Taejun's step slowed as he approached the meeting room again. He could hear the voices of Yang Hiwook and Choi Hyunji through the slightly open door. Why didn't you mention that your girlfriend works at director Kim Taejun's company? He might have helped her. We're in a subordinate position. There's no need to create complications. True. Soon wouldn't be of any help to our work anyway. In any case, I'm glad we're working together on this project. How about you? I probably like it more than you do. Oh, really? Soon would be jealous if she heard this. Hyunji's coquettish voice was slightly irritating. Yesterday, at Omoda Sando Hills, Taejun had noticed that Yang Hiwook seemed quite attentive to Choi Hyunji. There was no need to go back into the meeting room to retrieve the business cards. Smiling sardonically, Taejun turned around and left. To confirm this more accurately, he had hired the two of them. And today, he confirmed that they were quite conscious of each other. A spark could ignite at any moment. Soon entered the hospital room and greeted Kim Malhi. Malhi was sitting up on the electric bed, watching TV. Her eyes were focused and seemed to be enjoying the drama. How are you, mother? However, as soon as Soon entered and greeted her, Malhi's expression changed. The lively look she had while watching TV turned somber. On the day Soon had come to the hospital and then left, she heard that Malhi had waited for a long time. Today, it seemed that Malhi wasn't particularly pleased to see her. Did she get tired of waiting that day and get disappointed? Did you eat anything? How can I eat without anything to eat? You can't keep not eating like this, mother. I made some dishes. They might not be as good as yours, but they should be okay. 
Soen spoke cheerfully, setting up the table by the bed and laying out the food she had brought, helping Malhi sit comfortably. It had been three months since the liver transplant surgery, and Malhi had regained much of her strength. She could eat on her own and move around a bit. When Soen came, Malhi seemed particularly weak and depended on her for everything, but Soen felt happy about it. She thought Malhi was being affectionate because she accepted Soen well. Soen felt proud to be needed by someone. As Malhi took a spoonful of porridge, Soen asked, How is it, mother? It's fine. Although it wasn't high praise, it was a relief. Malhi kept glancing at the TV while she finished the bowl of porridge Soen had served her. Soen cleaned up the dishes and put the remaining side dishes in the fridge. Even though it had been a week since they last met, Malhi was unusually quiet today. Judging by the empty bowl, she didn't seem to be in poor condition. Remembering the day she had come to the hospital and then left, Soen felt a pang in her heart. As they sat in silence, watching TV together, the hospital room door opened. Sister. It was Malhi's daughter, Hiwook's sister, Yang Hijin. Hijin, who lived in Guangzhou, Jiangi province, had come to visit her mother, leaving her child with her husband. Knowing that her daughter was struggling to raise her child, Malhi didn't seem to be entirely happy to see her. You're busy. Why did you come? Dad is watching the child, so I came. So Eun, you're here too. After greeting Malhi first, Hijin turned and greeted So Eun as well. Yes, how have you been? How are you feeling? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Wow, it's hard to believe you had surgery the same day as my mom. You must be recovering quickly because you're young. I'm envious. Hijin looked back and forth between her mother, still in her hospital gown, and the vibrant Soon, letting out a quiet sigh. Soon felt awkward and forced a small smile. Hijin sat down between Malhi and Soon and started watching TV. Since there was only one chair in the hospital room, Soon moved to the caregiver's bed and crouched down. While watching a drama for a while, Hijin muttered, Oh my, now Soon will become a lawyer's wife. It was a scene where a villainess was trying to become a lawyer's wife in the drama. Soon smiled faintly once more. I wonder what it feels like to be called Madam, just for free. I should make sure my son doesn't become a lawyer. Even though she spoke as if talking to herself, Hijin's voice was so loud that neither Malhi nor Soon could help but hear it. My mom went through so much hardship to make her son a lawyer, and it only benefited others. That's how it is for a lawyer's mom, Malhi replied gloomily to Hijin's comment. Soon felt hurt, expecting that her mother-in-law would at least consider her position a little, but Malhi also agreed with Hijin's opinion. I'm not marrying to be called a lawyer's wife. I just love Appa. I'm marrying because I want to become family. Soon swallowed her words. After a long while, the interesting drama ended, and Malhi, who had been sitting for a long time, lay down, grimacing in pain. Eugene asked, Mom, what's wrong? Are you uncomfortable? I'm just a bit tired. It's time for you to recover. Why are you still like this? That's just how it is. I guess I'll get better. Isn't it because Soon is a bit weak and frail? Maybe the condition of the donated liver isn't good, so your recovery is slow. At Hijin's opinion, Kim Malhi sighed with a resigned expression and turned her head. Hijin, who had been looking at Malhi with a worried gaze for a while, turned to Soon and asked, Why is this happening when everyone else has settled and recovered? Ah, Soon. Soon felt a chill down her spine at Hijin's remark. She hadn't expected to hear such words. Her heart ached. She understood the anxiety due to the slow recovery, but it was unfair to feel resentment after giving a part of her body. We can't do the surgery again. It's so frustrating. Hijin muttered, 
adjusting Malhi's blanket with a choked-up voice. Of course, she wasn't actually crying. Hejin, who was spouting nonsense, and Kim Malhi, who seemed to agree silently, made Soon feel hurt, and she finally opened her mouth. Sister, you know, I gave the most precious part of myself to mother. You know that. It was the first time. She had never brought it up before. She believed they would understand without her having to say it. She didn't want the whole world to know that she was the future daughter-in-law who saved her mother-in-law. She just wanted her family to acknowledge it. She only had that small wish. Before hearing words of gratitude, hearing words of frustration was too much. The people who had thanked her endlessly and called her the family's blessing before the surgery. Soon's expression hardened as she spoke, surprising Hejin and Malhi, whose eyes widened. The atmosphere in the hospital room turned cold in an instant. After a moment, Hejin replied awkwardly with a flustered laugh, Our Soon has quite the personality. I was just saying, maybe it's possible. If you say things like that, mother might become more anxious. The surgery went well, and although it's slow, she's recovering bit by bit, so you should be careful with your words. Oh, oh, yes. I misspoke. I'm sorry. It was Soon's rebellion after keeping silent all this time. Hejin gaped in disbelief, unable to close her mouth. Malhi also stayed silent, merely glancing around nervously. Afterward, Hejin grumbled as she unnecessarily tidied up the already clean hospital room. Ugh, I can't say anything anymore. Hejin's muttering was faintly audible to Soon, making her feel uncomfortable. While Soon took the items to the bathroom, Hejin asked Malhi, Mom, what did you have for lunch? Is hospital food okay these days? I ate. Soon brought some porridge. Porridge? Let me see. When Malhi pointed to the porridge container, Hejin picked it up with a disinterested expression. After opening the lid and taking a spoonful, Hejin's face scrunched up. Soon, did you make this porridge for mom? Hejin called out to Soon with a tone that sounded almost accusatory. Soon, returning from the bathroom, asked, Does it taste weird? Try it yourself. Can you eat this? Hejin's tone was somewhat confrontational, which upset Soon. Mother said it was okay and ate the whole bowl. Mom, was this porridge good? Hejin turned and asked Malhi. Malhi leaned weakly against the bed, her voice strained. I just eat what I'm given. No matter what, this isn't right. Hejin sighed heavily. Has Soon's cooking changed? I heard she was good at it, but what's this about? I made it exactly as Appa told me to. He sent me the recipe and instructed me to follow it precisely, so I measured everything carefully. But you should taste it first. I did taste it. And it tasted good to you? Really? Can't you tell if it's good or bad? Can't you make that judgment yourself? Huh? Can't you think for yourself, Soon? Soon was speechless. Just as her large eyes widened, the hospital room door opened and Hewook entered. Having heard Hejin's voice from outside, Hewook asked, What's going on? What's happening? Hewook, Hejin said, almost in tears. Soon brought porridge for mom. But it tastes weird. When I pointed it out, she made me feel like the bad guy. She's unusually sensitive today. When did I ever do that? Soon was about to retort, but Hejin preempted her. Try it yourself. Am I the crazy one here? Hejin handed the porridge to Hewook, who took a small taste. His face immediately scrunched up. Why does it taste like this? See? I told you it's weird. With Hewook siding with her, Hejin's voice grew more triumphant. Soon, her expression hardening, said to Hewook, I made it exactly as you instructed. Then it shouldn't taste like this. Did you add something wrong? Then you make it yourself. Having expected Hewook to support her, 
Soon was at a loss for words when he too criticized her. Feeling she couldn't stay in the hospital room any longer, Soon said to Malhi, Since Hiwook is here, I'll be going now, mother. I'll come back next time. As the door to the hospital room opened, she could hear Hijin repeatedly exclaiming, Oh my, oh my, as if in disbelief. With emotions running high, Soon's steps quickened. By the time she reached the hospital entrance, she heard Hiwook's voice calling after her. Hiwook caught up with her and grabbed her. How can you just leave like this? And what should I do? Stay there. Soon turned around, showing her hurt feelings. What am I supposed to do? Everyone's nitpicking at me over something I made exactly as you told me to. If it's so bad, why don't you make it? Or have sister make it? See if it tastes the same, better, or worse. I put a lot of effort into this. I even sourced organic ingredients. And mother ate the whole bowl for lunch. She said it was fine. How much pressure did you put on her for her to eat it all without saying anything? Hiwook's irritated response left Soon even more astounded. Realizing he had spoken harshly, Hiwook quickly tried to smooth things over. Anyway, it's not about the taste. It's health food. I'll explain that. Your sister hasn't been here in a while. She might not know about mom's food preferences. Tell her that. Don't just say it to me here. Hiwook tried to calm her down, but Soon, already hurt, stood her ground. Her feelings laid bare. She had much to say. Yes, sister hasn't been here in a while. Since right after mother's surgery, I've been the one constantly checking in on her, no matter how hard it was. How often has sister visited since mother was hospitalized? How much have you taken care of mother? I've been the one most concerned about mother. How could sister say such things after not visiting for so long? And how could you side with her? Soon, who also needed care, had been taking care of the even sicker Malhi without hearing a single word of thanks. Turning to leave again, Hiwok grabbed Soon's hand. Let go. Calm down. I'll talk to her properly. Let's go back in. No. Call her now and tell her to treat me with respect. He soon. Let's not go overboard. Trying to persuade her, Hiwok suddenly changed his expression when Soon made her demand. Don't you think you're crossing the line these days? Do you need to be treated like royalty to feel satisfied? Hiwook's chilling words overshadowed the sweltering heat outside the hospital. Soon felt like her head was freezing. Forget it, I'll go back alone. We'll talk later. She saw his footsteps receding. He didn't look back. She heard some determined steps halted. Directly across from her, someone had been watching them and now turned away. Why is he here? Soon's eyes widened as she recognized director Kim Taejun. He met her gaze sharply, showing no embarrassment. Feeling embarrassed, Soon froze. How long had he been there? How much had he heard? Just a few days ago, she had bragged to him about her boyfriend. She had said her boyfriend treated her well, made her feel loved, pretending to be so happy. But he had heard all of that pretense. Kim Taejun was already leaving, but Soon wished she could hide somewhere out of shame. How ridiculous it must seem. How pathetic.